happy Memorial Day, everyone. Well, it's tomorrow, but uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to remember and honor all those who have offered their lives for this nation. It's really due to their sacrifice that we have our freedoms today. And also, you know, let us remember those early members who offered their lives for God's providence. And it's also due to their sacrifice that we stand on a greater foundation today. So last week, I talked about the Pentecost, which was a turning point in Christian history. But did you ever think about what happened right after Pentecost? I want to continue today uh, by exploring that. Let's take a look at the book of Acts. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. So at the time of Pentecost, the disciples, they received the Holy Spirit and they became apostles. They became like uh, filled with the Holy Spirit um, and um, basically confidently and with conviction told all the people uh, these basic points of repent, be baptized in the name of Christ, uh, Ask for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit as well. It continues, those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So these are uh, examples uh, from the book of Acts. It says that at that time, people, they prayed, ate together, fellowship together. They boldly testified and baptized new believers and they experienced this Holy Spirit regularly. And as a result, their numbers multiplied. So we can see that the Holy Spirit drove a powerful movement 2,000 years ago. Uh, and as I mentioned last week, we are in a similar time of change. But with the substantial Holy Spirit embodied in Mother Moon. Let's read. True Mother is the Holy Spirit in substantial form. She is the object partner of the returning Lord. Though Jesus came on earth, to earth as God's substantial object partner, he died on the cross because of the disbelief of the Israelites, after which he was resurrected, receiving the Holy Spirit as his spiritual bride. We receive fire when the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and becomes one with the power of our yearning for Jesus, the bridegroom. Through the words of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit, Christianity has spread throughout the world. At the time of the second advent, the Holy Spirit appears in substantial form. This is none other than true mother. This is from the book, May You Blossom, My Beloved. So I mentioned this last week, but I want to reiterate it because it pretty much summarizes our whole kind of understanding of God's providence. God created Adam and Eve, and he basically wanted them to mature, create a family, and create a wonderful world. Seems very simple, but usually the truth is very simple. Something went wrong, the fall happened, and throughout history, they've been trying to, God has been trying to restore that original plan that he had. So he sends Jesus, tries to restore, help humankind reconnect to God. Um, but unfortunately, although he did gain a victory through, through the resurrection, 
um, by demonstrating absolute love and obedience to God and to humanity, Jesus was not able to marry at that time, right? So instead of a physical wife, um, the Holy Spirit, together with Jesus and his words, was what gave rebirth to humanity at that time. But Jesus said that he would come again. But why did Jesus need to come again? Mainly because, again, as God intended uh, for Adam and Eve to be the first parents of humanity, he wanted also Jesus and the Holy Spirit to be the parents. And now he's returning to create an, uh, the substantial parents for humanity centered on God. And so Jesus really came back, um, appointed both Father uh, and Mother Moon, visited them, and gave them this mission, to ongoing mission that God had from the very beginning to establish true parenthood and recreate God's family here on earth. So I think this is, let's read here. Uh, true father who came as the third Adam, following the first Adam in Jesus, the second Adam, had to find and receive true mother, who is the third Eve. The Holy Spirit in substantial form and the bride, and together they had to become the true parents and give birth to sons and daughters free from original sin. Following that, those who have undergone a change of lineage through true parents' blessing become the family of God's lineage, which then expands until, until the ideal world is ultimately realized. So I already kind of summarized it, but there's the spiritual rebirth that we experience through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the substantial rebirth is through the marriage blessing. And again, this is what Jesus wanted. This is what God wanted. Uh, it doesn't want just to be, us to be saved spiritually so that we go to heaven afterwards. God wants us to experience heaven here on earth in our families. But in order to do that, there needs to be not just spiritual salvation, but there needs to be a change in our physical mind, in our bodies, where we can experience life free of sin. Um, so that may seem like uh, a pipe dream. But that's, if you think about what God would want, God would want his children to be able to live lives free of sin, right? So that's really the, the kingdom that we're striving towards and that we're working towards every day. And the marriage blessing is a key component of helping us get there. So the Holy Spirit provides this spiritual salvation and access to heaven. And the substantial Holy Spirit ushers in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So here are some examples of modern miracles centered on Mother Moon for God's providence. Less than two years ago, uh, we had a launching or inauguration of the World Christian Leadership Conference in December of 2019. Uh, we had um, representatives of Christianity, uh, all types, uh, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, all on the same stage, really representing the unifying of the body of Christ. And this is, you know, again, if you think about what would Jesus want, what would God want? You know, does, does God smile upon all the divisions and conflict among Christianity? Probably not. Did Jesus want to create all these denominations? Probably not. All they wanted to do was help humanity reconnect in the heart to God. So this is a very substantial example of bringing the body of Christ together. And we must ask, like, who else is doing that? Who else is bringing about unity among different denominations? Well, Mother Moon is. Another recent example, World Summit, February 2020, 2020 just a year ago, we had world leaders coming together. This was in South Korea right before the pandemic really opened up with uh, COVID. Uh, we had current and former heads of state from all six continents, democratic nations, communist nations, and even dictatorships. They came together centered on this vision for, for peace and reconciliation. And who gathered them together? 
It was under the leadership of Mother Moon that these uh, leaders all gathered together. And even more recently, uh, just a few months ago, uh, we launched the Think Tank 2022. Uh, it's a global multi-sector network of more than 2,000 experts from a wide range of fields. We meet, we're talking about government, business, academia, faith, media, arts, and culture, all of them dedicated to collaborating on uh, the world's most critical challenges, finding solutions for them. And right now, the main focus is how can uh, these thought leaders come together to bring about a peaceful reunification of North and South Korea. So this is very current and real. And, and again, Mother Moon is the one gathering all of these leaders to be able to work together on these challenges. And amazingly, the chair of Think Tank 2022 is none other than Ban Ki-moon, the former UN Secretary General. I mean, he is probably one of the most well-known figures, public figures in the world. Uh, and he agreed to really, because of the vision of what, what Mother Moon is trying to do, he agreed to be the lead or the chair of this Think Tank 2022 to help bring about the reunification of North and South Korea. This is amazing. I mean, really, this is not just spirit-led. It is, I mean, Spirit light is awesome, but I'm talking about not just in faith, but in substance, really bringing about and intentionally trying to achieve and working towards a peaceful world. And at that inauguration, Mother Moon was the host, and she didn't even speak at the event, but she ushered in this new era of hope at the end of the think tank launch by striking a gong. I think she likes... <laughs> The certain ceremonies to really signify the beginning of a new era. So the title of this sermon is Witness the Substantial Holy Spirit. You know, we witness all of these miracles, but how can we be a witness to Mother Moon as the Substantial Holy Spirit? The first thing I would recommend is to observe. Observe who Mother Moon is, the mother of peace, what she has done, and the impact that she has on your life and on others. You know, for me, I, I've been you know, working under Mother Moon's leadership for past seven years, uh, eight years actually, since 2013. And you know, some of the things that I've noticed was that Number one, she really is a filial daughter to God. Um, you know, if you read her early memoir, her early years, even from a young age of 12, you know, she felt this kind of devotion to doing God's will. And I remember, you know, after Father Moon's passing, it was such a difficult time for our movement. Uh, no one knew what was going to happen. And yet she took the mantle, took the baton, and continued to step up and lead the whole worldwide movement to recenter it and keep it going. Why? To continue to fulfill God's will. And I remember when I went to Hawaii to visit, you know, she invited me to talk, you know, when she appointed me as the CAR president back then in 2013. Uh, we had a chance to um, have breakfast together, and she was really sharing. And I remember distinctly with tears in her eyes that she is absolutely determined to fulfill uh, Father Moon's legacy. So I really felt like not just a filial daughter, but she is a devoted wife to Father Moon. Why is she continuing to do all these things? for fame, fortune, no, absolutely not. It is really to complete um, or continue to establish, firmly establish what Father Moon has started. And many of the projects that he initiated, Mother Moon is continuing in order to complete that legacy. 
So not only is she a filial daughter, at least from my perspective, to God, but a devoted wife to Father Moon. And finally, I would say, you know, one other thing is that she she does care for, or, you know, she has in her mind and heart, all of humanity. In her speeches, she's always talking about, you know, how do we reach the 7.7 or 7.8 billion people on earth? Constantly thinking about all of humanity, not just Koreans, not just Americans, but she's thinking about all humanity. And one of the you know, stark examples of that is that you know, she visited Sao Tome Principe. And I think there was this, this historic location where many slaves went uh, from Africa to uh, many other continents as slaves. Uh, it was called the door of no return, something like that. And she prayed a prayer of repentance, really repenting for the sins that were committed and the kind of the pain that people had to go through. Um, and she asked for forgiveness on the people so that the spirits could be liberated, those that lost their lives through that ordeal, and that those who are continuing to feel the impact of that that um, that act of kind of horror towards humanity. So those are just some some thoughts that come to my mind. I've also had the the opportunity to have more personal interactions. Um, I know many of you know that she's also birthed 14 children of her own. That's not an easy task. I can't testify personally, but I have two kids, 14, I can't even imagine. Um, but I know that when I was with her more closely, she, she also expresses a personal care for those around her. Um, one time, I remember, uh, this was already kind of an old story, but Five years ago, in 2016, I uh, I was suddenly called to attend a, a certain ceremony, and uh, it was my birthday. That's why I remember it. Um, and uh, I had a really kind of old suit that I had bought like five years before, so it was really tight. And so I didn't want to wear it on my birthday. It was like a you know three day leaders conference, so I decided not to wear a suit. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't realize there was a ceremony going on. So I went on stage. I said, it's my birthday. I don't need to wear a suit. Later on, I got in trouble. Uh, apparently, she, she called my boss, <laughs> Dr. Q and Kim, and uh, I got scolded in front of everybody. Uh, but I just felt at the time, I wasn't so happy about that. But uh, I did feel her kind of personal care, like, why aren't you wearing your suit at an important ceremony? And kind of feeling like that. Um, Lo and behold, a few years later, uh, there was a, a event uh, here when we did one of our rallies afterwards, she took a, a handful of us out. And she also, at that time, she bought me a, a new suit, uh, which I thought was, was really sweet of her. And I remember picking out a suit that was more, you know, modern looking, a little bit more cutting edge. And then she said, she told the, the the helper there, she was like, no, for him, he needs a, a, a traditional navy blue suit. So she she has an eye for certain things. Um, I'm still trying to understand why she wants me to wear a regular suit. But point is, I, I feel like she has this sense and a personal touch. And that's what I've experienced uh, myself. Okay, enough about that. Don't just take my word for it. Study her life yourself. Read her memoir, The Mother of Peace. Um, you can also study the morning devotion uh, recently, actually, on Dr. Hak Jahan Moon's series. If you go to edu.familyfed.org, uh, the episode 210 through 214, uh, Dr. Yong goes specifically into the life of Dr. Hak Jahan Moon and uh, kind of the, the meaning behind her, her life story. So if you're interested, you can go there. It's the May 23rd to May 27th. Again, episode 210 through 214. This will really give you deeper insights into her life. And finally, most importantly, in terms of observing is pray for understanding yourself. Pray, ask, ask God, ask God yourself. Who is Mother Moon? 
you know, I, I many times I when I don't understand something, I go to prayer. I actually ask God and say, why is this happening? Or why is this? Why is that? And, and, and the response comes. You know, there was a time where early in, in her ministry after father had passed, um, you know, she was emphasizing her role as the only begotten daughter over and over again. And I asked myself, why? Why, God, is she doing that? And um, the answer that I received was that, I asked her to, and that was enough for me, you know, to understand like she is responding to God's call, that there's a reason why she's standing up as a woman leader at this time, claiming this role as an only begotten daughter. It's to really elevate the status of women to the highest it can be. So, I want you to encourage, I want to encourage everyone here to, to offer your own prayer for understanding because God will respond and that will help you to understand who she is to you. Second, testify about your observations and the impact she has had on yourself and others. Okay, it's not enough just to observe and experience it yourself, right? And really the reason why uh, the Pentecost allowed for Christianity to grow and expand and um, not just Christianity, it's about, you know, helping people feel God's presence in their lives. God was working through Christianity to reach humanity. And the reason why they were able to expand so quickly was because people didn't keep it to themselves, right? They understood who Jesus was and uh was able to freely and confidently testify. So I want to encourage everyone to testify. These are some recent examples examples of, of people testifying. I was there just a week ago in Las Vegas at the ACLC 21st anniversary. And Archbishop Stallings boldly testified. What does the Lord of the Second Advent bring? I need the word. And true parents are the living word. The living word. Do you understand what that is? The living word. That's what I need. I remember him saying, like, I'm I don't need any more chicken dinners. I need the word. Um, he continued, I need bread from heaven. I need to see love, pure love, someone who talks about living for the sake of others. I need to see the Lord of the second advent talking about loving your enemies, and I need to see God in the flesh. So Bishop Stallings, he boldly testified that over all these years that he can he can have the conviction to testify to father mother moon as the living word that was powerful and right after that those in the audience they all experienced the holy spirit even me i remember just like tears started coming out of my eyes i didn't know why you know it was happening but it just I felt this whole spirit change in that room. And some kind of healing, some kind of release of a burden came about right after Bishop Stallings made that statement. Also, many of you know Bishop Noel Jones. Um, and in some of the sizzle reels, we've, we've seen him testify. I love this quote. You don't judge a tree by its branches. And you don't judge a tree by its leaves. You judge a tree by its fruit. And there is nobody here that can deny the significance of the fruit that we have seen exhibited by her, Mother Moon, her response to her calling. One more example. This is Prophet Samuel Radebe. He said, when I announced the first visit of True Mother, I told my church about the great work she's doing for humanity. And that is why I have embraced her. You know, Prophet Radebe, he is, you know, someone we recently kind of got in contact with. He has a, a following of millions in South Africa. And with that connection and his conviction, he basically filled a whole stadium of over 100,000 people and shared the blessing with all of them. So this is the kind of example of the multiplication that is happening at this time based on people experiencing the substantial Holy Spirit through Mother Moon. 
So really the third part, you know, I talked about observing and testifying is really ultimately to share the blessing. Let's read. While I'm still living on earth, all blessed families around the world should actively work and strive to expand the environment true parents have created so that they can teach others that from the outset, God the creator has been our parent and his dream is to realize the kingdom of heaven on earth and live here together with us. Very simple and beautiful message. God is our heavenly parent. He she wants everyone to know that. And God's dream is to realize the kingdom of heaven here on earth and live with us. That's it. That's what mother as the daughter of God is trying to get humanity to understand is that God is our parent and that God wants to be with us, live with us in a peaceful kingdom here on earth. What more do you think God would want to do? What more do you think Jesus wanted to do? It's really about creating the peaceful kingdom on earth, not just in heaven, but on earth. She continues, if a third of the 7.7 .7 billion people know and attend heavenly parent, we can realize the substantial kingdom of heaven on earth. So she's giving a direction um, that let us really connect at least a third of humanity to understand God as a heavenly parent. And that way we can contribute to building this kingdom together. So here are some examples of sharing the blessing. Uh, Reverend Mark Abernathy, love the guy. He is a fiery one. Uh, he already blessed over a thousand couples in his communities. And many of them have started recently going through the 43-day, 40-day separation and three-day ceremony to experience the fullness of the blessing. Uh, another example, Bishop Ron Thomas out on the West Coast, he started a monthly blessing ceremony at his church. And he's been talking every Sunday <laughs> about the significance of substantiating the blessing in your life. And not just, you know, in spirit, but he said, in order to realize Abraham's promise to be a blessing upon our descendants, we need to go through the blessing. Uh, I've only had a few times to meet with him, but he's got a really bright spirit. I uh, really love the guy. And uh, he was also there in Las Vegas. And he is excited to continue to share the blessing to revive his community. And of course, our own blessed families. Um, many of us have been continually introducing and sharing the blessing with couples and have, hosting these blessing uh, ceremonies in our churches. So I wanna encourage everyone uh, that let us continue to do that. Let us continue to share this blessing. And I want everyone to understand it's not just about the ceremony. The ceremony is the starting point. But there's the whole 43-day process to change your blood lineage. And then there's the blessing culture. You know, how does a blessed family, how is a blessed family meant to live? It's to honor your spouse, honor your children, honor your parents, really creating a culture in the family where God would naturally be attracted to. That's the kind of culture we want to spread and share. Okay, we're gonna wrap up soon, uh, but as always, there's the secret. And the today's secret is about how to overcome the fear of rejection. I know that as we outreach, one of the concerns is, well, they don't know us, and what if they, they think it's strange, or uh, what if they look up on the internet and there's some, um, some negativity going on? Well, the one answer that came to me when I was asked, thinking about this was, to see everyone from God's viewpoint. You know, what does God want for the people that you're reaching out to? If we see the blessing as giving other, others the access to the fullness of God's love, it's really a gift. It's a gift that we're trying to share um, to help them reconnect to God more deeply 
Uh, not that they don't have love already. Many people have good families. Many people have, well, actually, there's also a lot of challenges, even in our own blessed families. But the point is giving access to the full potential of God's love in their family. And that's what we're sharing. So how do we overcome this fear of rejection? Really pray and ask for God's viewpoint on the person that you're trying to share the blessing with. And the answer will come. So let us take full advantage of this time of Pentecost. Confidently share about the works and impact of the Holy uh, Spirit, the substantial Holy Spirit on you and others. And let's contribute to building a peaceful, unified world through sharing the blessing and our blessing culture. As you know, uh, the Peace and Blessing event is happening just one week from now on June 5th at 6 p.m. Make sure, I'm sure you've already registered yourself and your family and friends, but uh, remind them, make sure that they, they don't miss out. And even better, watch the show together. Maybe invite them to your home or host a watch party. Experience it together so that you can continue to discuss about this, about the blessing, and get them excited about taking the next steps for their lives and their families. So that's all I have to share for today. God bless you. God bless everyone. Let's have an amazing week. And let's prepare our hearts to welcome Mother Moon back to America. Mm -hmm.